Welcome to this DJI camera drone buying guide covering drones like the DJI Mini 4 Pro, the Mini 3, the Air 3 as well as the Mavic 3 Cast. This is a comparison on important aspects that will make it easier for you to decide which model is right for you. Since all of these are camera drones, there will be focus on video and photography. But there are other factors as well in terms of functionality that is Whoa. important to consider as well. But what about FPV? That is not included because this is a different kind of ball game and requires a different kind of skill set. Maybe a good topic for a later video. The DJI Mini 4 Pro is a replacement for the Mini 3 Pro. So it's up to you to judge based on the information that I'm providing in this video if it can justify an upgrade. These drones are not for free, so you probably have a budget when you have started out looking for a new purchase. And for many, this is an important factor and will be deciding for what they will end up buying. So these are the prices for the models that are included in this comparison. It's for the Fly More Combo that includes extra batteries and bags and all the good stuff as well as in the configuration where it's using the smart controller with the built-in screens. When you have decided what kind of money that you want to spend on your next purchase, it's also important to consider where you plan to fly your drone. The drone rules that you need to comply to often depends on certain factors like weight and speed, as well as other stuff that you need to consider. Let's take Europe as an example or EU as an example. We are flying under the EASA drone rules. EASA stands for European Aviation Safety Agency. And here the class identification labeling of the drone is really important and determines where you can fly your drone. In the countryside, far away from people, there's normally not any issues. You can basically fly any drone there, even the old ones without classification. But all drones included is labeled either a C0, C1 or or it's a sub 250 gram legacy drone. Legacy sub 250 gram drones and C0 drones can be flown in the city without any safety zones. And in most countries, you don't need additional insurance as your household insurance will cover the drone. C1 drones requires you that you obtain an A1, A3 drone certificate and you would need a separate drone insurance covering damage caused by the drone. Understanding the drone rules in your area is crucial. But from a complete beginner standpoint, a C0 or legacy sub 250 gram drone will be the easiest one for you to start out with. So the Mini 3 is considered a legacy sub 250 gram drone. The Mini 4 Pro has this little nice C0 label here on the base. The Air 3 carries a nice C1 label here just positioned behind the gimbal. And believe it or not, the Mavic 3 Classic is actually also a C1 classified drone. You can see it on the sticker here that's positioned nicely on the arm showing the C1 classification and that is despite that this is uh, the most powerful and the most heavy drone in the lineup. If you decide to fly in urban areas it's important to minimize the disturbance. And here the drones fall into two groups. The mini ones they are very very silent. If you fly those to 50 meters or higher you can barely hear them. Where both the Air 3 and the Classic are significantly louder. Let's compare the noise from the four models. I guess it could be even worse, but because both drones need to comply to the C1 classification, the noise have been capped around 80 to 81 dBA for both models. One of the biggest differentiators is the camera on each of the models. Your choice will depend on what you plan to do with the footage. If you like post-processing your footage or maybe even sell it, certain color profiles may be required. Many production companies, at least the ones I have been working with, prefer a flat and desaturated image that will make it easier for them to match up the footage provided with their own cameras. Most of the models featured in this comparison features the 1 or 1.3 inch CMOS sensor with a wide angle 24 millimeter equivalent optics with the aperture of 1.7, ensuring decent low light performance. The Air 3 offers an additional 70 millimeter medium telephoto lens at an aperture of 2.8, but based on the same sensor which in reality means that it's halving the amount of light compared to the 24 millimeter wide angle lens. 
The advantage of the 70mm medium telephoto lens is in its flexibility, including three times lossless optical zoom and offering a complete unique look by introducing lens compression. And the coolest part is that all features and color profiles are available on both cameras on the Air 3 making the 70mm a really great asset for this drone. The Mini 4 Pro has the same 1 or 1.3 in sensor implementation as we have seen in the wide angle camera of the Air 3. Compared to the Mini 3 series, including the Pro, means according to DJI that this will feature an enhanced ISP algorithm and SOC. I'm not sure what that actually means, but it's supposed to make the Mini 4 Pro capable of making better video quality compared to the Mini 3 series. Let's see about that when we put it to the test later in this video. The main wide angle camera of uh, the Mavic 3 series is based on the Micro Four Third sensor. Providing professional grade capabilities with a variable aperture from f2.8 to f11, allowing you to adjust the light seamlessly while the drone is airborne. Something that would normally require that you land the drone, mount a suitable ND filter, and that applies to the rest of the fixed aperture drones in this lineup. It has some really pro stuff going for it. <laughs> <laughs> the Mavic 3 series also comes as a pro model, the DJI Mavic 3 Pro, with a triple camera setup flanking the wide angle lens with a 70mm option similar to the one we saw on the Air 3, as well as a half inch telephoto lens that can provide up to 28 times digital zoom. Please note that I did not include this drone in this comparison as it's not really suited for beginners, as it requires an A2 drone competence certificate to be able to fly in the city under the open category as it's classified as a C2 drone. Video specs. The Mini 3 is limited to a maximum of 4K 30fps with only one standard color profile. The Mini 4 Pro offers more options with 4K 60 HDR video and three color profiles standard D-Log M and HLG. HLG Hyperlock Gamma is a high dynamic range format that will help you preserve all the details in your footage. D-Log M is a 10-bit flat color profile that requires post-processing to achieve a desirable look. Both HLG and D-Log M are 10-bit color profiles, opposed to the standard profile, which is only 8-bit. The difference between 8-bit and 10-bit color profiles is the amount of colors that can be included in the recordings. The DJI Air 3 offers the same options, but adds a 70mm camera, three color profiles, standard, D-Log M, and HLG. The Mavic 3 Classic provides four color profiles, normal, HLG, D-Log, and D-Log M. To compare the video quality, let's do a blind test and replay footage from each of the four drones in 4K 25fps. Let's do it in random order and see if you can pick out which one is the right one. This is how they look when played simultaneously. Let's compare the maximum capabilities of each drone, including a downscaled version of the 5.1K from the Mavic 3 and 4K 50fps from the Air 3 and the Mini 4 Pro. This will give you an idea of the camera performance during daylight. Night footage. Low light and night footage is important in some scenarios, so let's compare the performance from the lineup. The only drone that does not have a specific night mode is the Mini 3, so that one will be shot in 4K 25 fps. Night mode allows you to increase the maximum ISO by a factor 2, making the image brighter thanks to the dual ISO implementation on chip level. Let's take a look at low light footage from each drone. This is how it looks when it plays simultaneously. Vertical video. Vertical video has become increasingly popular on uh, social platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and uh, YouTube Shorts. Both the Mini 3 and the Mini 4 Pro is capable of shooting true vertical video in maximum resolution. And this is because it is possible to rotate the camera 90 degrees. The Air 3 automatically crops in the image, but that reduces uh, the maximum resolution to 2.7K. The Mavic 3 Classic does not offer vertical video at all. Here you would have to take maybe the maximum resolution of 5.1K and then manually crop in in post to get a vertical video. 
that will, despite the 5.1K, lead to the lowest resolution in the lineup. This is how they look from all four candidates played simultaneously in 4K and in some cases cropped to 916. Slow motion video. With the Air 3, DJI introduced 4K 100fps on some of their smaller drones. This is now also available on the DJI Mini 4 Pro. The Mini 3 can't go that high as it's an entry level drone, so that one will be shot in 4K 25 fps. The 100 fps is kind of a challenging as I shoot most of my footage on a 30 fps timeline and that does not really add up. So a 90 fps option or even a 120 fps option which is provided by the Mavic 3 Classic would have been a better option. You should really pay attention to this as if the frame rate does not match the timeline your footage will not look good. Which is also the reason why I've decided to shoot some of this in a 25 fps so it basically can contain uh, <laughs> the footage that I'm uh, recording uh, uh, with this slow motion setting 4K 100fps. Let's compare the slow motion video quality from each of the four drones. When you're using the slow motion options available from DJI on any of the drone, the footage is slowed down when it's stored on the SD card. So it's basically slow motion when you play it back. And now side by side. With the 101.3 sensor, the default photo resolution is 12 megapixel. This is achieved by binning four pixels of the 48 megapixel sensors into one by using quad buyer technology. With the larger Micro Four Third sensor of the Mavic 3 Classic, you will be capable of capturing 20 megapixel photos. Containing a lot of details in theory, so let's compare. Let's look at some samples from each drone. And now side by side. For the Mini 4 and the Air 3, there is actually an option to capture 48 megapixel photos as the native resolution of the sensor is 48 megapixels. And this is how they look. Now let's compare them to the Mini 3 and the Mavic 3 Classic. You can obtain images in both JPEG and RAW with all four models. Protection and sensors. DJI's newer drones offer advanced sensing technology, providing them with full obstacle avoidance capabilities. In this lineup, the exception is the Mini 3 that has only downward sensors that will assist it during landing. The level of protection is impressive for a sub 250 gram drone. In the past, I had a lot of worries about autonomous modes providing sideways motion with a drone without any sideways protection. But that's no longer an issue with the Mini 4 Pro and upwards. If you doubt the effectiveness of these systems, check out a separate video that I've made to demonstrate the capabilities where I really push the DJI Mini 4 to the max. You can access this video through this card. While it's not flawless, these systems work really, really well. And with the DJI Mini 4 Pro and the Active Track 360 that is tailored for various shooting scenarios, making camera movements like circling, pulling in and pulling away very intuitive. Once you figure it out. <laughs> That was counterintuitive. <laughs> and I must say, Mini 4 Pro, as it is right now with the current implementation, actually outperforms the lineup in terms of protection and sensing capabilities. I hope these improvements to the algorithm that I've seen with this drone will be implemented in the Air 3 and the Mavic 3 Classic as well. The DJI Mini 4 has a flight time that is four minutes shorter than the Mini 3 Pro, at least on paper. This is expected with all the real-time sensing that goes on affecting the battery life. In real life usage, it does feel shorter and don't expect more than 20 to 22 minutes if you fly the DJI Mini 4 Pro under rough conditions with the standard battery. Both the Air 3 and uh, the Mavic 3 Classic, due to their larger batteries, it kind of feels that they stay in the air forever. You can very easily get to the right side of 30 minutes with both of these drones. I really like that because that provides peace of mind when you're out on a mission, where I always feel a little bit stressed and a little bit constrained when I'm flying the mini drones, due to the shorter flight times. Wind can be a real challenge for these mini drones. They are rated for level five on the, the Beaufort wind scale. But I tell you, when it's windy, they are being tossed around like crazy in the air. And the camera is very often knocked out of position. Despite really windy conditions, the DJI Mini 4 Pro performed admirably during a recent active track test, showing its ability to avoid obstacles effectively. However, there are of course limits. So if you live in windy areas, the Air 3 is maybe a better choice as this is rated for level 6 on the Beaufort wind scale. Both Air 3 and Mavic 3 Classic, they are champs 
in windy conditions. Offering stability, reliability, minimizing the risk of you losing your drone. I conducted a wind test under extreme conditions with gust over 88 kilometers per hour. And the Air 3 actually handled, despite the conditions, extremely well. Transmission technology and signal strength. Both Air 3 and the Mini 4 Pro have been upgraded to take advantage of the latest transmission technology O4 that will give you a whopping 20 kilometers of range with full HD video transmission in FCC territory. This is way more than you would ever need, but it tells you that the transmission stability has been increased compared to the previous version. Both models can be bought with the second generation of the DJI smart controller, the DJI RC2, that comes with these external antennas, as well as a 32 gigabyte of internal storage. Please note that the RC2 is not backward compatible with the Mavic 3 Classic or the Mini 3, which both are using the first generation DJI RC. While it's still possible to get the old type of controller where you sort of positioned your smartphone on top of the controller, I do want to recommend that you opt in for one of these uh, smart controllers. That is taking your flying experience to the next level. And by not using your phone, you might avoid issues that I've seen in the past with overheating and the screen dimming down so I really can't see what's going on. This will not happen with these smart controllers and the built-in screen is even bright enough for you to see it in bright sunlight. And I would say the little extra that the chance for you to get that option is actually reasonable. The importance of transmission technology may not be significant in most cases, as you typically need to keep the drone within visual line of sight in most parts of the world. However, the O4 technology is more stable when it's used with the RC2 with the external antennas, making it less sensitive to interference. Intelligent flight modes. With the Mini 4 Pro, the Air 3 and the Mavic 3 Classic, you have access to features like active track, master shots, quick shots, hyperlapse, and panorama. You can also create waypoints for autonomous missions, and you can use cruise control, a feature that will allow you to continue a motion with the press of a button, accommodating multiple inputs. The Mini 3, being an entry-level drone, lacks most of these advanced features, limited to only panorama and quick shots. My recommendation for beginners. With all the information considered, and if you are brand new to the hobby, I would recommend the DJI Mini 4 Pro, as it provides the best from all worlds. It is lightweight and has a portable design. It offers true vertical shooting, omnidirectional obstacle avoidance, a powerful video transmission, and you gain access to almost all the advanced features from the Air 3 and the Mavic 3 Classic. I'm actually kind of surprised with the level of functionality that they have been able to pack into the Mini 4 Pro. It's really an all-in-one drone, it's easy on the legislation, as well as you get access to a ton of functionality. If your budget is very limited, then you could opt in for the Mini 3. But remember, this is an entry-level drone, so all the fun stuff that you see everybody is doing, you will miss that. For those looking to enhance their drone experience with the increased flight times, better stability in high wind, and more camera options, the Air 3 might be the better choice. If you prioritize to have the best camera in class, the Micro Four Third sensor of the Mavic 3 Classic is unmatched. But it is a larger and more heavier drone, so that's a factor to consider. In conclusion, my recommendation for beginners would clearly be the DJI Mini 4 Pro. Do you agree or do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you already made up your mind and decided to purchase one, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below. Are you interested to see more videos about the DJI Mini 4 Pro? Then I've compiled a playlist with all the videos that I have made and will be making about this new drone from DJI. And you'll be able to access this through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you did like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.